Lamentations chapter 3. Uh, Lamentations. Uh, if you know where Proverbs is, turn right, you go through Jeremiah, and you'll find Lamentations. Uh, Lamentations chapter 3 and verse uh, 39. Lamentations 3:39. It says, Wherefore doth a living man complain, a man for the punishment of his sins? Uh, let's have Jack House open up prayer. Are you guys be seated? Uh, the time of my message this morning is the way people handle sin. Um, I would say, you guys, if you probably look around like yourself, a lot of people didn't know that verse exists by the way we act at times. Uh, so that's kind of why I'm preaching it. Uh, you probably didn't know it exists, and that's what we do a lot of times, is that we'll complain for our own punishment of our sins. Uh, so that's kind of, kind of be the theme. But I'll show you some different ways people will handle sin, but that's one way right there is we complain. Uh, before we get into that so much, uh, I'm really preaching it because I preached on sin last week about how it can stop you from good things and stuff. Uh, but I'm preaching it because if you get good at something, uh, it becomes fun to you. Uh, if you get good at something, it kind of becomes addicting. Like, okay, I actually like this now. Um, if you guys get good at life and live for the Lord, it would become addicting to you. Uh, it would become very fun to you. It's not like I'm going to go out there, oh, this is terrible because I'm bad at it. Uh, if you're not good at something, you don't like doing it. That's just the facts. Anything in life. Uh, I don't know what you guys aren't good at. I don't know. Uh, but I promise you, if you get good at that thing, it becomes very fun. Uh, if you get become good at serving the Lord, you realize, oh, yeah, I do do that, and you correct it, it can become very fun. Instead of just complaining all the time and not even realizing you're doing it, then life's not that fun. Uh, but I do promise, if you get good at something, it becomes addicting, it becomes something you actually enjoy. Uh, the best way I can relate it to me is with golf. Uh, I was terrible at golf. Like, I... You, I'd go out with you guys and I'd embarrass myself. And do you think I like doing that? Uh, no. Uh, so I got better at it. And guess what? It's become addicting to me. It's like I actually kind of addicted to it. Like I got to go every week now because I'm actually getting somewhat decent at it. It becomes very fun when you don't make a fool of yourself all the time. Uh, same way with church. It becomes fun if you don't look like an idiot all the time. Uh, I went Tuesday and have like a senior group. So a bunch of old guys who know how to golf all the time. I already told my parents this because I was very proud of myself because uh, I did something good. So there's like six guys, and, you know, older people will play slower. Uh, so they let me and my buddy through. And I hate doing that because usually what I do, I make myself look stupid. Because uh, then you swing and it goes like 20 yards in front of you. Like, okay, thanks for letting me through, guys. See ya. Hope I never see you again in my life. Uh, but this time for once in my life, uh, I hit it like 280 yards right down the middle. And they're like, all oh, went crazy. Like, yeah, well, that's just that's what I do every time. I just come out here and hit the ball in the hole and keep moving, you know. Uh, because, but that comes addicting when you actually get good at it. Uh, so I'm kind of addicted to it right now because of that experience. Like, oh, wow, yeah. Yep, that was fun. Uh, but church in your life can be like that when you realize not to do what verse 39 says, not complaining about your own sins. Uh, when you realize the way to handle sin, it can become a very good thing in your life, and you can still enjoy life, even though you are going to sin, because uh, you will. Uh, but it can become an addicting thing to actually get right about it and become, Amen. when you come to church, you're like, oh yeah, Mitch, I hit that 200 yards right down the middle this time. I don't have to look like an idiot today. Because uh, nobody likes being made look like an idiot. Uh, so that's all I'm trying to do, is show you the way to handle your sin, because you are going to. And it is a lot more fun, this life's a lot more enjoyable if you just know how to handle it. It becomes actually something quite enjoyable because uh, you'll quit complaining. Uh, so that's where we're going to start at. Lamentations 3.39 says, Wherefore doth the living man complain? You're alive. You don't have too much to complain about, right? Uh, but what does the end of the verse say? A man for the punishment of his sins, right? Not my sins. Uh, not uh, your wife. Not 
you know, your kids, your sins. Uh, you have your own sins that you do all by yourself. And guess what? There's going to be some punishment from that. And you've got to handle it, hopefully, the right way. Uh, the right way to handle it is the exact opposite of Lamentations 3.39. If you go up and swing and miss, is you'll complain about it. Uh, why would somebody complain about something they did themselves? That would be like me hitting my hand with a hammer and me complaining about it. Uh, who hit my hand with a hammer? Uh, myself. And there's a punishment for hitting myself with a hammer, correct? It is going to hurt. Uh, so, henceforth, why can you sit there and complain all the time when you're the one who did it to yourself? It's kind of a hard thing to justify when I'm sitting there listening to people complain when all you did was create your own mess. That's a very hard thing to do. Uh, are you going to sin? Yes, you are. So I don't, I'm not going to say I don't mind, because you should mind me sinning. I understand that. Uh, but that will happen. Uh, but the worst thing for you guys to do is sit there and let's have you talking to me or testimony time or you just out all the time complaining about it. And so just owning up to your sin and moving on, you sit there and complain about it the whole time. When you're the person who what? You did it to yourself. I have that highlighted in my Bible. It says his sins. Uh, so I'm not your problem, believe it or not. Uh, the Bible is not your problem, believe it or not. Uh, your boss isn't your problem, believe it or not. Uh, it's you. Uh, you're going to be your biggest problem. And the easiest way to handle that is not to complain. Because who likes to be around people complaining about their own problems? And all you got to do is quit sinning. That's all I can tell you to do. Like you're good, so you can complain all you want, but at the end of the day, that's all I can tell you to do is quit sinning and get right about it. Uh, so that becomes a lot more fun. Life becomes a lot more fun if you just get right about it than us just sitting around and sin and complain about it all the time. Because uh, you will sin, and there will be a punishment for that sin. Uh, just get right and accept it and move on. Uh, instead, we like to have a kind of a talk where we sit there and complain a lot. Uh, so this is a, ver a verse that should stick with you the rest of your life. It shouldn't just stick with you today. I do realize some messages are like that. You won't remember them. Uh, but if I was you, if I was going to memorize verses, uh, this would be one right here. Is Because you all have a tendency, if you're going to look at yourself in the mirror, we have a tendency to do that. I have a tendency to do that, so I need to keep it very close and fresh in my mind so when I do sin, I don't complain about it. I don't complain for the own punishment of my own sins. Uh, that's a very messed up way of doing it. Uh, but look at verse 40. This is what we should do instead of complaining about our sins. Complain about the punishment of our sins. Limitations 3.40 says, Let us search and try our ways. And do what? And turn again to the Lord. Uh, it's very simple. That can get your life very good, and that can get addicting. Uh, when you mess up, this, instead of sitting around complaining about it, for you to search and try your ways and turn again to the Lord. Uh, that makes life fun. That makes you want to come back to church. That makes you want to read your Bible. That makes you want to pray. That makes you want to do all that stuff. If you're like, well, I don't really feel like reading my Bible, I don't really feel like coming to church, it's probably because you're complaining about the punishment of your sin. You're complaining that some of your sin I found you out, and now you don't like that part. Uh, that's a part of it. That is part of this life. There is a punishment to it. Uh, like it or lump it, it's easier to like it and move on and search for the Lord's ways. Uh, but some people will follow church and don't read your Bible because of their own mess they created. And you can see the writing on the walls with a lot of people. You can see the road, let's say, I'm going down. Like, you know that's going to lead to this, Mitch. And then I follow church like, well, I kind of saw that one coming because once his punishment came, he didn't like it, so he just left. That's what a lot of people do. Uh, but that's not a very fun way to live life when you get in trouble just to leave. Uh, that's what a lot of people will do. They'll, they get in trouble when they leave. Uh, you will get in trouble, uh, but verse 40 tells you what to do when you get in trouble. So do it. Verse 40 says, let's search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. Who sounds like a person Miss Jones wants to be around? I always think like that. Uh, the person in verse 40 is who I want to be around, uh, not the person in verse 39. Uh, the person in verse 39, I really won't listen to too much because uh, they're miserable people. People who complain all the time are miserable people, uh, let alone for their own stupid mistakes. Uh, how many of you want to be around that person? How many would you want to come today and listen to me complain about my own mistakes I've made and how I feel like it's not fair? Would you really get out of bed for that? I hope you wouldn't. I, who knows, we might have more people come because then they would like to complain too. Uh, but I really hope that wouldn't be worth you getting out of bed for you coming and listening to me sit here and complain about how I feel like because of my own mistakes and my own sins that I just, it's just not right. That would be kind of crazy. Uh, but it's fun to be around people like verse 40, let us search and try our ways and turn against the Lord. Uh, that's an addicting thing to be around a person like that. Uh, I like to be around people like that. I try to find people like that. Uh, so that's what this message is for, is to show you how to handle your sin. 
Uh, verse 39, that's not how you handle it. You don't handle it by complaining. And verse 40 is how you handle it. You search and try our ways, and then you turn again to the Lord. And you turn away from your sin and turn to the Lord's way again. And that's going to be the first way of how you handle your sin. Are you good to sin? Yes, yeah, so that should help you out a lot right there. And this is going to be a very short message, but uh, it's one that you got to remember the verses to. Just remember Lamentations 3.39 because people like to complain. It's part of our human nature in the flesh. Uh, I realize that. And so at my work, I had to assign people jobs. So there's like 15 people. I tell them what they do for the day. And no matter what I do, guess what somebody's going to do? They'll complain. Uh, this one day I said, hey, you're going to be on bin today, guy. He's like, oh, I don't want to do bin. I'm like, okay, do what you want then. And then by the time, 10 minutes later, guess what he was still doing? He's still doing the same job. So he just had to, like, he just had to complain about it for like 10 minutes and then figured out, oh, that's what I want to do anyways. Uh, that's a lot of people in church. Uh, the Lord tells you what to do and you got to complain about it, but that's what you wanted to do anyways. Uh, you just had to complain about it for 15 minutes and had to sit there and listen to your mouth. Uh, but they're union, so you can't do nothing. Bob is saying uh, it's annoying listening to people complain when that's just what they want to do, anyways. The Lord's just trying to help you out, and then you sit there and complain still. Because uh, punishment for your sins will help you out, and it helps you learn a lot. Uh, you don't really learn a lot when you eat McDonald's all the time, just to be honest with you. Uh, when you get some punishment to your sins, you learn a lot. You learn a lot about yourself, you learn a lot about the Lord. Uh, so it's a very good thing. Just don't complain about it. Uh, look at Job 19:28. I'll show you another way we need to handle sin. Job 19, 28. First one's don't complain because it's your own problem anyways. I didn't make you sin. All you did is you wanted to yourself. Uh, Job 19, 28. So that's the first one. If I had three points, I could hum like it for you, but I think you guys can kind of track what's going on here. Uh, so the first one is complaining, the second one is going to be just realizing it's you and nobody else, because for some reason, when somebody gets in trouble, they like to try to drag somebody else into it. Uh, it's just you, just taking on the chin. Uh, Job 19.28 says, But you should say, why persecute we him, seeing the root of the matter is found in me? Uh, that's 99% of the time the root of the matter is found right in the person in the mirror, uh, myself. Once again, you guys aren't my problem in life. I promise you... I might try to make it like that, like you guys are my problem, but my only big problem in life is myself. Uh, the root of my problems is right in myself. Uh, the root of my problems doesn't go to be, or for you guys, your wife or your kids, or come and listen to me or your job. It's just going to be you and how you handle life. Uh, that's the root of the problem. Uh, so that's something that we, was the start of the verse say? But you should say. That's what you should be saying. Uh, but do you? Uh, no, because you do what Lamentations 3.39 says, and what do you do? You complain. Uh, you should say, what? Why persecute we him? Why should I sit there and persecute Jack or Chad or anybody's integrity here when the real problem is just myself? Why would I attack somebody else and persecute him when the real problem is just me? But you should say, why persecute we him, seeing the root of the matter is found in me? They persecuted Jesus Christ. Was he the problem? He was the last person that was the problem. Amen. He was the fix to the problem. Uh, but you usually persecute the fix to the problem. Uh, the fix to your problem... Is just saying you're the problem. I know that's a lot of me talking like lingo there. Uh, but that's really all it is. Uh, but when we sin, we'd like to try to think, well, I did it because my wife or my kids or this church or just my situations in life. Uh, no, the easiest way to say it is because it was me. Uh, the reason why I sin is because of Mitch Jones. Uh, I realize you guys don't have to see me once a week, but I get on my nerves. I mean, if you saw me once a week, I'd probably be like, oh, he's pretty cool. Uh, but I have to live myself every day, so I'm kind of an annoying guy. And I have to realize I'm the root of the problem 99% of the time. I only see you guys once a week, so it's not that bad. But 99% of the time, uh, your wife could tell me you're just a jerk. Like, yeah, because he's the problem. And 99% of the time, I could say, yeah, your wife's the problem because she's the problem. Or I could say I'm the problem. Uh, everybody's a problem in their own life. Uh, because there's a punishment to your sins, and you've got to realize to accept them. That's what it's going to come down to. Uh, and we don't like to do that because when it comes down to pike, we like to sit there and run away. Uh, but the only problem that we have here today is ourself. Uh, that's the easiest way I can say it. The only problem I can get mad at when I have a bad day of golf is who? Myself. It's not a team sport. I can't say, why'd you not pass me the ball? I'm the one swinging the club every time. Uh, it's the only problem I can get mad at when I sin is myself because I'm the one actually doing it. No one can force me into you. You might coerce me, but if I know enough Bible, I'll know to stay away from it. 
So then again, it's my own problem if I don't know enough Bible to get, stay away from you. Uh, so I'm the only person who can sin for myself in so many words without doing a deep study on it. So in 10 years from now, don't come back on me. Well, what about this? Well, we're not talking about it right now. But I'm the only person who can do it for myself. Uh, so when it does happen, it blows up in my face. I'm the problem. You guys are my problem. I just don't like when people lash out at other people when it's just they're the problem. Uh, but that happens a lot because in the flesh, that's what you'll do is you'll lash out at other people. Uh, but if you do what the Bible says and you handle sin the right way, is you'll realize, oh, no, that was just me. That was just Miss Jones being Miss Jones. That was my, that was my fault. Uh, life can be a lot more enjoyable to be around. Uh, you actually could probably like being around me if I was like that all the time. Or you could actually enjoy being around some people if they're like that all the time. But are they? No, because we get in the flesh and we like to make other people become our problem. That's how we do it. Uh, that's the second way of how not to handle sin, is realize that you're just a problem. It's very simple, it's very easy. And it's an easy problem to fix if you realize that. But until you realize that, it's very hard to fix and you're always going to be putting the blame on somebody else. It's very hard to fix that. Uh, 2 Chronicles 28, I'll show you what else the wrong way to handle sin is. 2 Chronicles 28, uh, we like to take advantage of when somebody else is getting punishment for it. Because uh, you'll get punishment for your sins, and I might be able, if I'm smart enough, I'll be able to see that. And it's easy to take advantage of that. So it's easy to kick somebody when they're down. Uh, but that's not the way to handle it here, so I'll show you that. Second Chronicles 28, verse 8. Second Chronicles 28, verse 8. Uh, St. Chronicles 28 says, And the children of Israel carried away captive of their brethren 200,000 women, sons, and daughters, and took also away much spoil from them, and brought the spoil to Samaria. But a prophet of the Lord was there. It's always good if you have the Bible or a prophet or a preacher there, because they'll tell you what you're doing wrong. Uh, that's why a lot of people don't like preachers, because we tell you what you're doing wrong. That's exactly what I'm doing today. I'm telling you what you're doing wrong. Uh, this is something you have to deal with. But a prophet of the Lord was there, whose name was Oded. And he went out before the host that came to Samaria and said unto them, Behold, because of God, uh, the Lord, God of your father, was wroth with Judah. Uh, the Lord's going to be mad at you guys at times, because you sinned against him. And he's a perfect God, so what does that mean? He's going to be mad against you at times. Uh, that's what happened here. It said, Because the Lord, God of your father, was wroth with you, Judah had delivered them into your hand. And you have what? And you have slain them in a rage that reacheth up unto heaven. Uh, now I see the Lord's against you, guess what? I'm going to come against you because now is my time to attack you. Is that exactly what they did? Yep, in a rage, they got him. Verse 10 says, And now you purpose to keep under the children of Judah and Jerusalem for bondmen and bondwomen unto you, but are there not with you, even with you, sins against the Lord your God? Is that a good point to make? Uh, do you guys not have any sin in your life either? I didn't realize that. So why are you making these people your bondmen and bondwomen when you still have sins in your life? Uh, so what, that's something you got to realize. Nobody's perfect in here. Uh, so don't make somebody your bondwomen, bondwomen, bondmen and bondwomen. I'll say slaves because I can't say that too much, all right? So if that's incorrect, politically incorrect, I don't care. I just can't keep saying that word over and over. Uh, make somebody your slaves or make somebody bondage to something, all because you could kick them when they're down. Uh, the prophet, the Lord says, and what? At the end of the verse, but are there not with you, even with you, sins against the Lord your God? So why are you doing that to them when you have sins against the Lord your God? That's a good point to make. Uh, so that's some way not to handle sin, is not taking advantage of the situation for your own profit when you have sins in your own life. And you're, you'll be in that same position before you die at some point. The Lord will be mad with you at some point before you die, and somebody could take advantage of that. And that's exactly what they did. In verse 8, they took 200,000 women, sons, and daughters. Uh, that's not very nice, is it? That's not the nicest thing to do when I have my own sins. It's not fun for me to sit there and make fun of your sins when I have my own sins. It's basically what I'm relating to in our life now. Because uh, it's easy to do that. Like, how stupid are you? Are you really that dumb? And then five years later, I do the same thing. Is that really smart for me to do? Uh, no, I don't think that's really smart for me to do, to sit there and make fun of you guys when I'll do the same thing two years from now. Because uh, I got my own sin, and you got your own sin. Uh, the best thing we need to do is not sit there and take advantage of each other when we're down. But just get right about it. Uh, I'm not going to make you my slave or your bondmen and bondwomen all because you're going through right now because of the punishment of your sins. Uh, you will have that period in life where that's what you're going through. Uh, but that's not my point and time to make fun of you for it. Uh, but we have a tendency to do that because uh, that's our that's Miss Jones in the flesh is to see you mess up and for me to make fun of it. 
because I'm doing right. Everything I do is right. Uh, no. I have my own sin. You can make fun of me for the stuff I do also. Uh, I might just not broadcast. You might just got caught, and everybody knows now. Uh, but you might just not know about my stuff. Uh, so that's something we got to watch out for. That's not the way we want to handle sin. We don't want to do it like that. Uh, look at Psalms 144.14. I'll show you this is the main goal that we want to have here today. Psalms 144.14. And we're almost done. Psalms 144, verse 14. Uh, this is the goal that we'll be striving for in our life, in our church. Because then it can get fun. It can get addicting. I'm like, no, I want to go to church because it's fun. I'm good at it. Amen. I know what to do. I don't go up there and swing and miss and look like an idiot. Uh, but if you come to church and never read your Bible and everything, you kind of feel like an idiot. Who likes to feel like an idiot? Nobody does. Uh, Psalms 144, verse 14. It says, That our oxen may be strong to labor, that there be no breaking in nor going out, that there be no, what? Complaining in our streets. So it kind of goes back to our text of Lamentations 3.39. That should be our goal, that there should be no complaining in our streets, whether that's uh, this church, whether that's at your job, whether that's you reading the Bible every day, whether it's that with your wife. I don't want to have any complaining going on in the streets because everything that's coming my way, I deserved it. And that's just part of the way that the setup is in this life. Uh, I shouldn't be complaining about it because at the end of the day, if I want to sin, I wouldn't have no problems. Amen. If you don't sin, you have no problems. You guys do know that, right? Except the very few uh, scenarios, exception to every rule, where you just get tried and that does happen. Uh, but I'm going to be honest, probably 80% of your problems is because you created them. I'll be nice. Maybe 70 it's probably like 99, but, you know, I'm trying to be nice today. Uh, it's because you don't have a problem. If you want to sin, you wouldn't have that problem. If you wouldn't done that, you wouldn't have that problem. And like I said, now, you will have a scenario like Job every once in a while, uh, but that's few and far between. How many Job stories are there in the Bible? Not too many. How many stories are people messing up and having to reap what they sow? Quite a bit. Kind of a lot of those. It would take me a lot longer to preach those than it would about the scenarios of you actually did something right and got persecuted for it. Uh, they're in there, but it's just a lot few and far between. Uh, so that should be uh, my goal, is that our oxen may be strong to labor, there be no breaking nor going out, there be no complaining in our streets. Uh, so that's what we want, but how do we get that? I'll show you in Psalms 51 verse 4. Let me show you how you get no complaining in your streets, how you don't complain about your own sin. I'm going to show you David. He's a very good example because the Lord liked David. So I think it's good to show people the Lord liked and how he dealt with his sin. Because uh, David sinned and the Lord still liked him. So how do you sin and the Lord still like you? Well, I'm going to show you. How do you sin and not complain about it? How do you sin and not mishandle it and take advantage of somebody? I'm going to show you. Psalms 51, verse 4. Psalms 51, verse 4. This is how David handled his sin, and it worked out for him. So I'm just going to show you this is how you do it. I showed you not how to do it, and I'm going to show you how to handle your sin. Uh, Psalms 51, 4 says, Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. And if you keep reading, if you like, uh, it's a very good verse. But Psalms 51, 4, what does he do? Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Sounds like he's not complaining about it, right? Sounds like I just want to get right about it and whatever happens, that's my own problem. I created the problem, so I understand I'm going to have some consequences to it. But I just want to make sure I'm right with you, Lord. A lot of us don't like to do that because we know there's consequences coming, and we don't like to deal with the consequences. Did David have some consequences to his sin? You could preach a lot of messages on that. He did, but at the end of the day, he still just wanted to be right with the Lord. Amen. So the best thing I can tell you is don't worry. You're going to worry about him, but don't worry about the consequences so much of you just getting right with the Lord. Uh, that's the main thing. You want to handle your sin the right way? Just get right about it and accept whatever's going to come after that. And you're going to deal with it. Uh, that's where you like to complain, but you can't complain of something you did to yourself. Just accept it. The main problem is you just getting right with the Lord about it. Against thee and thee only have I sinned. He wasn't saying, you know what, it was actually Mitch's fault is why I did that. You know, right, Lord? I was trying to, you know, it was Mitch. He didn't say that, did he? Against thee and thee only have I sinned. He took responsibility for his own sin. It's very important that you take responsibility for your actions. That's something you should know at 13 years old but we have a bunch of 40-year-old men running around, don't you know that, right? It's kind of weird when a man runs around and doesn't take responsibility for his actions. It's a very weird thing to look at somebody that does that. Uh, Psalms 41, verse 4. Psalms 41, verse 4. Uh, 
I'll show you how he handled it. There's a common theme how he handles it. He just gets right about it. He doesn't complain about it. He doesn't murmur about it. He doesn't sit there and say, well, this and that happened. You know, this is why it led me to this and tries to justify it. He just gets right about it. That's the way you handle it. Psalms 41 verse 4 said, I said, Lord, be merciful unto me. Heal my soul, for I have what? Sinned against thee. Very easy to the point. How much easier can I get than that? That's the way you handle sin right there. It's not something very complicated, uh, but we make it complicated when we start complaining and trying to justify ourselves. That gets complicated then. Uh, if you come to the altar or if you pray in your own time uh, throughout the week, I said, Lord, be merciful unto me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. Uh, you handle sin the right way. Because you are going to sin. You need to know how to handle it. The Lord still liked David, and he took care of him even though he sinned. Why? Because he got right about it. And it's not complicated, uh, but we don't like to do that at times. Uh, second scene in 24.10, I'll show you one more. Just to show you the theme, how he does it. He has a very consistent thing. Second Samuel 24.10. Second uh, Samuel 24.10. And we just got two more verses after this and we're done. Second uh, Samuel 24.10. There's a lot more verses like this, uh, but I'm just giving you the idea of how he handles it. And you can do that studying yourself. Uh, don't be like, Saul and say, well, just don't do it in front of everybody, Lord. You can correct me, just not in front of everybody. Uh, there's people like that. 2 Samuel 24, 10 says, And David's heart smelled him after that he had numbered the people. And David said to the Lord, I have sinned greatly in that I have done. And now I beseech thee, O Lord, take away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. Uh, so one thing David always realized is that it was his problem. It was his fault. No way else but what? I done foolishly. Uh, not Chad, not Jack, not Mitch. <laughs> Uh, not my dog, not my wife. Uh, I did it. And the Lord, what? Likes that. The Lord likes when you get right about it. He doesn't like when you sit there and complain about your own mistakes that you made. Uh, the Lord doesn't like when you complain about, well, i got to go to First Baptist Church in Cambridge City. Uh, well, that's the life you created for yourself. Uh, you can move and try to find another church. Uh, but you chose to come here. You see what I'm saying? You choose stuff, so why would you sit and complain about it? Why would you complain about... Uh, my teaching when you can go somewhere else. It doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? You can go somewhere else, or you cannot sin. Uh, don't go somewhere else. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it's an example. Uh, you're kind of weird complaining about me when you can just go somewhere else. It'd be, me weird, it'd be weird for me to complain about you coming here when I could just kick you out, right? I don't have that authority if I'm making a statement. <laughs> uh, I, we had to vote. No, okay. uh, but why would I complain about you? I'm just happy you're here. You should just be happy I'm here. Uh, but we have a very weird way to look at it at times. Uh, look at Jeremiah 2.35, because I'll show you the exact opposite of what we do. Because uh, David had a very good quality to him where he said, yep, I was an idiot. I done foolishly, my bad. And he got right about it. Uh, but Jeremiah 2.35 is probably what we do most of the time. If you even think about your sin. Hopefully you guys think about your sin and try to get right about it. Uh, Jeremiah 2.35, it says, Yet thou sayest, because I am innocent, surely his anger shall turn from me. Behold, I will plead with thee. Why? It says, because thou sayest, I have not sinned. That's not the way to handle sin. It's just say you haven't even done it. Uh, if you have kids, you probably have your kid done that before. Did you do that? No. Did you do it? No. How about now? No. And then they finally come tell you, I did that with my mom. Uh, she knows the story now, so I don't care. Uh, but she has these longer burger parties, and I ate a piece of fudge I wasn't supposed to. And I didn't tell until I was 18 or 17 years old that it was me because it wasn't, I didn't want to feel the wrath of my mom on that one because it wasn't, now I don't care. But at the time, I just said, no, that wasn't me. Uh, that's not the way to handle sin. That's not the way to handle your mistakes. Say, no, no, that wasn't me. And then 20 years later, come back to church and think you're not going to have any problems when you never got right about it. Uh, you're going to have problems if you come back to church 20 years later, never got right about some sin. And then it's not going to become fun to you because then you're going to look stupid to yourself. I don't really care because I already know you look stupid. Uh, but you're going to feel stupid when you swing and miss and it goes 10 yards. Like I said, I'll never see those guys again in my life, so why would I care if I did get in front of them? Because that's how we are, right? 
well, I never see him again, but it makes my day because I hit the bomb in front of him. It makes your day if you come to church and actually feel good. It can become addicting. It makes you want to read your Bible. I'm just telling you how we are. I should not care. And why would I care about six 80-year-old men that don't even know my name? They can't even tell me who I am. They probably can't remember what they ate for breakfast, but it means something to me, right? Because it feels good. Uh, so that's why I'm trying to get you guys the experience. You actually come to church and enjoy it because you don't feel like a complete, total loser all the time. It's not fun to feel like a loser. I promise you that. It's not a fun thing. No, so this message was just here for that, to make you actually enjoy coming to church because you know how to get right about stuff instead of feeling... Because you feel guilty when you sin a lot and then you come to church and then, let's say, he preaches on it and then you're like, well, now I feel even worse. Now I feel even like he knows that I did that. Uh, you probably think like that maybe. Uh, we have no clue. Uh, I can have some good guesses because I do it too. That's all I know. Uh, so I, I just guess what I do, to be honest with you. Uh, but at the end of the day, don't take advantage of somebody when they're going through the punishment of their sin because it's easy to do, like in Saint Chronicles. Don't say you never sinned, and then don't complain about it because you just did it to yourself. Now, be like David. Just say I've done very foolishly. I messed that up. Uh, I'm willing to accept the punishment, and let's move on from there. That's what David did, and he did it. Uh, so I'd be like that. Uh, that's all I got for today. Uh, something hopefully you guys will think about because this is a message where uh, you deal with every day because you sin every day. It's not something you deal with once every four months or something. It's an everyday occurrence. So hopefully you'll remember some of those verses. That way you know how to handle it and actually can still feel good about some stuff in life. Uh, but go ahead and come up to the altar. That's all I got.